Hey guys, what's up? Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as promised, today we have uh, another collection update. This time it's going to be the more raw, the more obscure part of black metal. As previous videos was was pretty much tame. You all know knew these bands. They were big bands. This one is uh, more of an obscure update. Uh, mostly vinyl, four vinyl, one CD. Uh, today we are drinking a beer and we're drinking this one. This is a uh, Cablico, uh, local um, uh, craft brewery. Very good beers, usually. And the most, uh, I don't know, maybe iconic th thing about them in Estonia is that they make this uh, silly yet wonderful, very colorful uh, images on the cans. As you can see, this is a session IPA. Uh, I think it's four point, yeah, four point five degrees uh, of alcohol, or how you say in other countries, volume of alcohol. So yeah, uh, yeah, very colorful. We have a goose here, or maybe it's not a goose, maybe it's another bird, but yeah. Uh, also, the other thing that I should mention about them, uh, it's very foamy. There's always foam. This one has been standing still for 10 minutes, and every one of their beers usually has foam. As you can see, a lot of, yep, here we go. I can already see. It usually doesn't even matter how you pour it. There's always like a big foam. You see what I mean? Was standing still for 10 minutes and yet there is foam. In each beer, so don't blame me. Like somebody said that, uh, yeah, one time I poured the beer wrongly. Somebody said it in comments. So yeah, let's take a look uh, into this psychedelic uh, masterpiece here. Hopefully this won't happen to me when I drink the beer. But yeah. Uh, craft beer, local Estonia, very cool one. Uh, so, how is our foam? Our foam is all right. We can have a sip and we can start this update. So, cheers to you. Stay safe as usual. Cheers. Very rich flavor. Actually, let's while we talk, we're gonna pour it. Maybe the foam will go away. Yeah, as you can see, it doesn't matter how how you pour it, how you twist the glass. There's just a lot of foam always in these beers. All right, let's go. We're starting off immediately and we're starting off with the CD to get it out of the way. Uh, so this is this one. Uh, oh, but guys, by the way, uh, it's dark outside. It's raining. Uh, I'm shooting in the middle of April, this one. Uh, the natural light is almost gone. Since I'm filming in evening, I turned on the the house lights. So if there's some problems, it's because it's dark outside and we have house lights inside. So uh, let's go. Uh, this is Outlaw Death Miasma from uh, Brazil. So the band is Outlaw. The EP is called Death Miasma. Uh, established in 2015 from Brazil. Uh, what's interesting about this band is, uh, or may I say what's interesting about this CD, uh, during the second wave of uh, COVID, uh, the band somehow uh, made it into Estonia and actually gave a gig here. Uh, I don't know how, or how was it possible, but they did it. And uh, my friend bought me this uh, CD, not just like a present, you know, sometimes uh, you bring your friends some presents from the show, so yeah, it wasn't my buy. So uh, Death uh, Miasma is actually their latest uh, uh, EP, uh, 2021 release. Uh, uh, the band is uh, interesting, as you can see, first of all, it has a pretty hardcore name, Outlaw. Outlaw is usually like some hardcore bands, but yeah, this one has uh, that name. Uh, as you can see, it has this uh, Viaton vibe going on here in the logo. And actually, it even says anti-cosmic black metal. You can read it here. Uh, so the lyrical theme is uh, cosmic and uh, a bit of uh, luciferianism mixed into it. Here we have uh, the quote, we are all slaves until uh, we break free from cosmic will. So very cosmic band. Uh, what's interesting about the whole thing is that it's very rich on melody, very rich on melody. Like every track is uh, almost, I would say, uh, uh, melodic black metal. Uh, the vocals are very clear, there are more uh, shouting vocals yet clear you know you know what i mean you can get like every word uh yeah and uh, 
another interesting thing is the drums. The drums are very intense on this release. You can like hear them very, very clearly. Uh, there's some tempo changes here. So it has some, uh, it has some variety. Let's take a look closer into the beautiful artwork. It has some variety going from uh, fast to mid tempo. Uh, yeah, and it has some trash elements into it. Like if you combine the vocals, which are like I said, more clear vocals, and the thrash elements, sometimes you get a feeling that you're listening to maybe like thrash and black metal, not like pure black metal. And another interesting thing that I have to point out. Uh, so this, uh, yeah, let's do it like this. So this one basically has like three original tracks and the cover of uh, Devil's Blood, right? So. Uh, <laughs> If you listen to this one and this one, and then you go to this one, the third one, Death Miasma, you will be very surprised. Like, uh, pick up this EP and listen to the third song, Death Miasma. I guarantee you uh, there's uh, an absolute moi worship in the first track. It even starts the same as uh, one of the moi tracks. Uh, and the vocals that the guy does in these tracks, uh, I think they are more uh, moi vocals. He even tries to do them... Uh, in that kind of style. Uh, it's very interesting, I heard people uh, writing that this is a uh, pure plag plagiarism, but uh, I don't know, I think it's more of a kind of, you know, worship thing, like, obviously, if you're gonna write uh, a track like that, it means that you're a big fan of um, Gua. Overall, uh, yeah, uh, check it out if you're into more of a thrashy uh, black metal. This will do for you. It's kind of satanic, it's kind of co uh, anti-cosmic, you know, all those vibes. Uh, maybe for... Uh, actually, maybe for um, Watain fans. If they want to, uh, you know, not go more aggressive, but go a bit down. And have a bit of a melodic twist, so this might appeal to them. So yeah, this is Outlaw Death Miasma 2021 EP. By the way, this one is released on... Uh, Drakkar Records, uh, and this is it. You can read the uh, South American Division. So, yeah, uh, Drakkar is kind of in between uh, label, it's kind of controversial, kind of not controversial. They do all stuff. So, yeah, uh, check Outlaw out. Uh, I heard that the, the live performance was quite good. Yeah, check them out from Brazil. Uh, let's not even waste any time and immediately jump into the next one. Uh, the next one is quite big. Uh, I went to a festival in February, the local festival uh, done by local guys. Uh, bands were from all over the Europe and, and uh, yeah, this one is one of those pickups. The band was also playing live in there. Uh, most of you might know this band. It's a little band called Obscure Tatum. Yeah. From Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, undisputably probably one of the biggest names in uh, raw black metal scene, established around uh, uh, 2010, if I believe, uh, believe uh, if I believe I am correct, which I think I should be, uh, part of the infamous uh, Black Plague Circle from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, surprisingly, this is their first full-length album released in. 2017. Uh, the band is uh, mostly run by one guy who does over everything on uh, on live performances. There are session musicians. Uh, so yeah, I've seen the band live uh, on Halls of Winter Festival. For those who don't know, they can check out my uh, video and check it out. Uh, yeah. It's a, it was a pretty interesting performance, uh, pretty amazing performance. The stage presence is very, very strong uh, from Obscure Tatum. Uh, and it's, uh, they, bring, they bring the raw black metal experience to life. It feels like a, a ritual is going on. So yeah, uh, about this album, like I said, they had a bunch of demos first, uh, and then they released uh, this one in 2017. This is a first full-length album called... Uh, uh, Kralevstvo Mertvich, uh, which is basically translates to In the Kingdom of the Dead. Let's take a look at the pure, true, cult, black metal uh, art cover here. Also, Obscure Tatum has a very unique logo, in my opinion. Yeah, and uh, what can be says, uh, said about this uh, album? It's uh, 
as it suggests, it's uh, welcome to the kingdom of the dead, basically. In the kingdom of the dead. Let's take a look if I took everything out. Yes, I did. So, what is it? It's a one-way trip to Abyss. Uh, by the way, I got it from... Uh, yeah, it was released on uh, Black and Green and uh, Alkane, Al I think Alkane Productions. Uh, it's first press, I think. Uh, there was second press, which was white, and uh, this is a black one, so the white one was limited to 300 copies. I think the black one was limited to 300 copies as well. Anyway, I got it from uh, the festival, and of course it comes with a bunch of weird shit. For example, it comes with a Signal Rex... Uh... <laughs> it's, it was supposed to be non-controversial video. I actually didn't see this one. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, it comes with a Signal Rex flyer for some reason. Signal Rex uh, were present on the Halls of Winter Festival, as well as uh, other labels. Uh, check out my video, you will see the band life and you will see the atmosphere overall. Okay, let's actually look at what it comes with. So it comes with this beautiful flyer. So like I said, it's one way trip to the Abyss, like a one way ticket. Uh, it starts off with a gloomy intro. It's kind of the intro is already sets up the mood perfectly. It's uh, nerve wracking. It's unsettling, uh, and then we are hit by a wave of uh, raw, uncompromising, uh, true cult black metal. Uh, it's filled with grim, chaotic vocals. Uh, also, the uh, the riffs are pretty insane. They are chaotic all over the place, but everything uh, feels very organic. It feels like uh, you're listening to something uh, evil and chaotic, chaotic, but as w at the same time you feel it's very organically done. It's uh, done perfectly. There's a bit of uh, vampirism in this one as well. Uh, vampiric madness, I would say. O on overall, this is like, uh, I think the runtime is about uh, 40 minutes. And so yeah, it's 40 minutes of uh, basically omnius uh, black metal. It has a very omnius feel to it. Side labels, uh, nothing special comes on black. Black as the metal that it's uh, supposed to or it 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 represents basically. Yeah, uh, one of the top bands, like I said, in a raw black metal. Uh, if you want to feel the atmosphere of. Uh, uh, unsettlement, fear, uh, anger, and then, I don't know, hate, and as well as uh, the atmosphere of empowerment and uh, atmosphere of ritual, Obscuritatum is definitely a band uh, to check out. Also, I met the guy behind the band on the festival. Uh, thank you for uh, thank you to organizers of the festival who let me drink a little bit with them. Uh, yeah, uh, the guy was very cool. He does a lot of artwork for other bands. I'm sure the people who are in the underground uh, know his work all around, not only at Kurtaman. And uh, it's uh, also signed by him. There you go. So yeah, it was a pretty cool show. Everything was perfect and the guy was extremely cool. So yeah, uh, thank you to everyone to organize, uh, organizers, uh, to the band, for letting me hang out with them. And yeah, check out uh, Obscure Tatum, uh, Kralevsto Mertvach, uh, in Kingdom of the Dead. It's uh, an amazing release from uh, an amazing uh, raw black metal band. Yeah, with a beautiful cult cover. All right, we're actually going pretty fast, uh, but let's have a beer. So yeah, uh, finally recovered from COVID, completely uh, feeling good, uh, yeah. So guys, uh, cheers again, stay safe and stay healthy, let's go. Ah, oh, god damn it. Man, I love crowd beers, especially IPAs. And I actually like it when they're a bit on the lower side of alcohol, like 4.5 to maybe 6. Because some of them are like, uh, you know, you buy and it's like triple uh, dry hopped IPA, 8 degrees. You drink one and you're drunk immediately. But yeah, we're not wasting any more time and we're going to look into another one of my pickups from the festival, from Winter House. And there's going to be a band uh, that also played uh, on the festival. Uh, yeah, 
it's quite an iconic uh, band, in my opinion. It was one of the bands. I want to see Obscure Tatum in this band more than any other on that festival. So yeah, uh, here we go. It's this one. Uh, this one is uh, a three-way split. The name of the three-way split is uh, Expurgaku da Ira Pelo, uh, I don't know, Ventre da Satanas. I'm guessing like this. Uh, this is the only time I'm gonna pronounce it uh, because it's in Portuguese. What does it mean? It means purging of wrath uh, from Satan's womb. Yep. Uh, cool cover, probably cemetery or the forest. I'm guessing, yeah, forest or cemetery. Comes with the thick flyer backside. So three-way split, as you can see the bands here. So womb, Iraya and uh, brr, what was it? Or them uh, satan satanica. I wanted to see Iraya on uh, Halls of Winter. I went there, like I said, for Obscure Tatum and Araya, and they didn't disappoint. Rocking uh, black metal all the way, made uh, the whole crowd move. Uh, one of the best performances that day. This one actually is from Signal Rex, and I bought it from uh, a stand of Signal Rex uh, in, uh, on the festival. So, uh, first of all, what do I want to say? This is... Uh, actually, no, let's first... I'm gonna briefly discuss the band. So, Womb here, uh, 2000, established in 2015. Iraya established in uh, 2002 and uh, is a part of the Black Black Circle in Portugal. Ordem Sat Satanica established in 2014 and is a part of uh, clandestine. Uh, Aldebaran uh, circle, if I pronounce that correct, that one is pretty hard. So the logos here, these two have quite traditional one, this has more complex, signal racks, as I said. So what do I want to say about this three-way split? Uh, the first thing I want to say is, uh, this is how you do a three-way split. This is, uh, in my opinion, it's one of the best three-way splits I have ever heard in my life. Why? Because it's so organic and each band uh, complements another band. There's no drops in quality, like there's no uh, one band that plays uh, fast, for example, black metal and then you turn to another side and there's like a depressive suicidal black metal that, and both bands do not complement each other and they do not feel fit on the split. These three bands are amazing, they fit perfectly. It's a perfectly balanced split. Uh, so uh, let me just characterize this this way. Uh, womb. Womb is a <laughs> basically a raw, black and roll band. At least on this split. It's fast, it's aggressive, it's a uh, quite a rocking and quite a uh, rock and rollish sounding uh, now let's talk about uh, for example Irai, the next band uh, it's more of a traditional raw black metal that is fast paced again it's, it, it makes you move uh, Ordem, uh, Ordem Satanica is more of a fast black metal also raw but it has that necro feel to it you know it, 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 even the vocals are in the back that's why I, in the back end uh, there are like echoes, but it still is fast. There's some slower parts, but it still is fast. That's why I say like this uh, is a perfect split. Uh, of course, uh, each band is from Portugal scene and the Portugal scene is a very, very good... Uh, I believe a lot of people praise it. And this split is one of the examples why it's uh, like this. The whole album flies by, each, uh, each banner is represented by three tracks only, unfortunately. I would do, I don't know, maybe five tracks each. Uh, it's rocking, the whole thing is rocking, it's thick, thick sounding, it's like juicy. The sound is juicy, it's fast, it's raw. At the same time, it's uh, nasty, it's filthy. And the whole thing feel, feels like, you know, like you're on a fucking black mass. Only it's not a boring black mass, it's like a black metal concert black mass, you know? Pure insanity. It's like, um, the best way to probably characterize the whole thing is like to say that uh, it's like uh, Carpathian Forest 
on rower steroids, you know? The whole thing is that rocking, it's that vibing, it's that, uh, yeah, fresh, thick and juicy and nasty and filthy at the same time. So yeah, check this split out, I think it's sold out. It was one of the most popular items on the festival where I got it. Uh, I got the last copy, by the way. Yeah, so this is uh, Purging of Wrath uh, from Satan's Womb. Uh, Three-way split by uh, Womb, Iraya and Ordem Satanica. Released by Signal Rec uh, Rex Records. Uh, yeah, amazing stuff, guys. Check it out. Uh, and in overall, check out the whole Portugal scene, if you have not. Okay, so we got two more 20 minutes in, so maybe 30 minutes. This will, video will be around 30 minutes. Uh, yet again, cheers. If somebody from Europe has uh, any beer recommendations in craft department for IPA, drop them in the comments. I'll try to find those beers and check them out. All right, so next up, next up we got... We got this one. Dying Full Moon from Germany. Came out of nowhere. Released uh, by Amor Fati. Uh, and a lot of people were excited about this. And rightfully so. Uh, Dying Full Moon is a two man band established in Germany in 1993. Uh, interest, uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, the guys uh, behind the band are. Um, one goes by the name Thaibai, another one goes by the name of uh, Astaroth uh, Viotarios, so if I pronounce it right. Uh, yeah, so the band is long sp split up. Like I said, established in around uh, 1993 in Germany. In 1994 they released, uh, I think, the first... It, 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 I think I, they, they released the first demo, which was called In Thy Dreams, and then they released this one. Uh, in 1995, which is called Unter dem Thron der Sterne, uh, and then they split up. So from 1995 or 1996, uh, they are no longer active. As you can see here, the guys. Oh yeah, by the way, here are their names. So yeah, this one was released by Amor Fighter Records, and uh, like I said. It's, let's, I don't remember, does it come with, no, it does not, maybe I put it somewhere here, no, I don't think, it, I don't think it comes with anything, but yeah, well, let's take a look at the artwork then, uh, so, uh, there are screaming vocals, at some parts of the uh, release you can actually feel that the vocals are a bit resembling to Varg, like when he screams, drums are extremely loud on this release, they are basically right in your face. Uh, face. I believe uh, the promotional uh, material for this band, uh, for this EP to sell an armor party, was the slogan uh, uh, the EP can. or demo. I don't remember if it's a demo. I'm gonna say it's a demo. That, that, uh, yeah, it says actually here it's a demo. Ugh, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Uh, the demo is. Uh, it can put to shame uh, uh, most of modern black metal bands. And it, uh, I absolutely agree. <laughs> it's one of those classic, like, like remember the full moon from Poland? Like, this is the same. It's uh, like a classic gem hidden somewhere in time, lost in time. Uh, it's cult, it's grim, it's necro, uh, fast, uh, and surprisingly, it has a very catchy beat to it. Mm. It's outstanding for its time, I think. I think it's even, uh, you know pre-exceeded its time, it came too early, uh, let's take a look at the final, because this one is a colored version, it's kind of this greenish looking vinyl, uh, yeah, interestingly enough, the band also uh, mixes things up by including some uh, classical uh, music into like intros of the songs, and there's also some synth and ambient present. Uh, very overall strong necro feel uh, and very cult feel. Uh, basically, pure old school black metal in its prime, non uh, commercial. Basically, yeah, just satanic, proud, and don't give a fuck about anything. 
uh, like it should be. So yeah, uh, Dying Full Moon from Germany, <laughs> 1995. Damn, I always wondered, uh, like after listening to this, like uh, it's a shame that bands like uh, this, Dying, uh, Dying Full Moon and Full Moon from Poland, uh, they just uh, disappear into obscurity of time. It would be interesting what they could put out in uh, our modern time. Not saying that there aren't any bands who, you know, do the raw stuff or do the... This is not even raw, this is like a pure black metal, you know. I think the raw came uh, later in the years, but this is like as black metal as uh, black metal can get. Thanks to Amor Fati for uh, releasing this one. Yeah, check it out. Okay, we have one more. The last one. And it's, a, it's actually a big one. A lot of people anticipated this one. First, let's actually finish this. And again, god damn it, look at the foam. I haven't even poured that much, but yeah. But good beer overall. Check it out if you can. My throat is uh, still has issues after COVID, uh, like the dryness. I don't know why. So yeah, cheers. Let's make it not dry. Uh, okay, last one, big one, the most, one of the most anticipated out of nowhere albums that came out out of nowhere. I think it came out of nowhere. Didn't really see any announcements. Of course, I'm talking about this one. Nocturnal Triumph uh, with self-titled album Nocturnal Triumph. Uh, Nocturnal Triumph is a band from USA established in 2015. Uh, this is their third full length, as I said, self-titled, released in 2022. Uh, like I said, the album came out of nowhere, like nobody was expecting it and it came out. Beautiful logo. Very simplistic, yet has some charm to it. This one is even more beautiful, the cover. I really like it, it's like obscure in the goat here. Uh, yeah, actually, let's take a look also. It comes with this one. It has nothing on this side, but it has uh, a very interesting quote on this side. Uh, it is one thing to wor worship God and quite another to follow the paths path that I have taken damn it uh, this one is worthy of the tattoo <laughs> I'm not joking I mean it's a very very cool quote so nocturnal triumph uh, why I say a lot of people anticipate it if you are not into raw black metal then probably you don't uh, like follow this scene. Uh, this one, the band is infamous for riffs, 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 and more riffs and riffs upon riffs. Uh, and they don't disappoint uh, here. Uh, first track, hypnotic, melancholic intro, begins very slowly and then bam, we blast off into one of the most memorable riffs that I ever heard. Uh, and then it it has this memorable riff and it goes on, goes on, on, goes on. And then again, bam, we're switching off from that memorable riff into this uh, fast, hateful uh, black metal that has another memorable riff. And there, as you can see, there's only four tracks, but it's 42 minutes long. So uh, each song is about 10 minutes long. And each song is pretty fast. So... It there's like layers and layers upon riffs in a song. There can be like three different riffs for a quite some duration of the time in one song, and they're all memorable. Uh, so there's some also some parts that are melodic, but mostly, mostly it feels like it's a raw black metal toying with some uh, like melodic stuff. Uh, take a look at the side labels. By the way, released also on uh, Amor Fati. Mm. Basically, I can characterize it only as a, it's a raw, magnificent masterpiece uh, from this US band. Uh, also, the blast beats here are very, very aggressive and very, very fast. The vocals, uh, by the way, I can't describe vocals uh, in any way. I would say they are just like a traditional black metal vocals. 
Uh, and uh, another interesting thing, uh, they toy a little bit with the idea, at least on this album here, uh, with atmospheric black metal uh, stuff on uh, slower parts, which they don't have really a lot slower parts here, but yeah, they do that. So there's a lot of variety here, and it's definitely an, an album that I feel like when people make those uh, end of the year lists. Uh, I believe Nocturnal Triumph will show up on some of them, if not all. Maybe not on a high place, because uh, I, I understand this, uh, that riffs upon riffs again, uh, riffs upon riffs, uh, even if it's done majestically and beautifully, it can still be very repetitive. So maybe it won't be high on the list, but I feel that Nocturnal Triumph will be on those lists. So yeah, this is a band from USA, check it out, you will definitely dig it, Nocturnal Triumph, uh, self-titled, third album released on Amor Fati, um, probably already sold out, but there is a CD version, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, 30 minutes, cool, uh, not that bad, not one of our longest videos, but it's cool. So, uh, next video. Probably, I'm not going to speculate it, but probably it's going to be the uh, politically inter incorrect series. I already have a bunch of stuff uh, from uh, those kind of bands, and yeah, I think it's about uh, time we do that one. But yeah, anyway, uh, I might still change my mind and uh, do another one. It depends on some things, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yet again, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, like if you want if you don't don't like uh, leave a comment i'm always uh, happy to reply and uh, yeah as usual uh stay safe stay frosty and stay fucking black metal cheers and bye